Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Uh, this morning, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the simplicity of salvation. You know, I participate in some Bible-believing Facebook groups, and there is a discussion going on as, as I'm recording this uh, about the simplicity of salvation. And uh, I'm always praying for God to give me a subject or a topic of uh, something to do a video about. Amen. I, I want to keep, keep sending out good stuff and videos for everybody that's watching. And uh, so, you know, that's always on my mind. So as I was looking at this and some people I on kind of both sides of the conversation are people that I absolutely love and respect and hear where everybody's coming from. And so I thought I would just do a little video on the subject this morning. And the subject that's being talked about is, do you have to believe in the deity of Christ to be saved? Do you have to believe and know that Jesus Christ is God in order to receive him? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, for our salvation. Hallelujah. And we thank you today for the King James Bible uh, that we can know all there is to know about you. Thank you for preserving it. Thank you for giving us final authority to always check up on whatever we think or feel or hear. Lord, thank you that we have the book. Uh, so now, Lord, just be glorified and uh, uh, and and help me uh, to try to make something clear, which is very clear, very simple, and very plain. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. So, so that's the that's the question going on. <clears throat> and you know, in in the past, we have done uh, uh, videos uh, talking about the gospel, and we discussed about how that certain people say, hey, no, no, you're not saved if you didn't understand and believe this. And then somebody else will come along and say, well, though, you aren't saved unless you understand and believe this. And so people are putting a lot of uh, uh, prerequisites for mental information uh, at, before the spiritual transaction of the new birth can occur. Um, so. I've always said, and I will say it again, salvation is receiving a person, not learning a formula. Okay. Now, just in the way of my personal testimony of my salvation, and this is why I'm so adamant about this. Um, I grew up in a Christless home. Uh, no one in my home was saved. And even actually my mom uh, was kind of on the atheist side. So I was basically brought up to believe that Jesus and the Bible were like Santa Claus and the tooth fairy. This is all just make-believe stuff. That's the way I was raised. I never read the Bible, never been to church a single time in my life. I didn't know anything. All I knew is maybe what I saw on, on TV and Christmas. You, you, you can't ha live in, in a Western civilization without being exposed to Christmas. So I kind of knew a little bit from the Christmas story, amen, that uh, in Bethlehem, the Son of God was born and he went to the cross. And, you know, I, I mean, I knew some of those basics in the back of my mind. But just knowing them and believing that that was just like Santa Claus is just nice stories that we tell the children or whatever. That's the way I thought about it. And so uh, when I came to that point in my time in my life where I got saved and uh, uh, a man began to sat down and, and and the whole. See, here's the important part. The Holy Spirit of God was dealing with me. See, God, God, God had brought me to a point in my life. While I was recognizing need and the Holy Spirit was, he was hammering on the door of my heart. And this man filled with the Holy Ghost sat down and began to talk about Jesus. And listen, I didn't know anything about doctrine. I didn't know anything about the deity of Christ. 
I didn't know anything about the Trinity. I didn't know about about First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I didn't know about the uh, uh, importance of the blood and, and, and the atonement. I didn't know any of that. But I saw Jesus in this man. And I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. That, yeah, this is real. Jesus is real. The Bible's true. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I'm in. And and I trusted. I accepted. I believed. I opened the door to my heart. Amen. Bible says, for as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. In that moment, while that man was talking about Jesus, I received Jesus. And the Lord Jesus Christ, in the person of his Holy Spirit, came into my heart, and I was born again. And I'm here to tell you, I had Zero, zero scriptural, theological background or learning. What I did know is this Jesus he was talking about was real, and I accepted him. I didn't know he was God in the flesh. I didn't know he was the second person of the triune Godhead. I didn't even understand that it was de his death, burial, and resurrection and shed blood that paid for my salvation. I didn't understand that. But... He was knocking at the door of my heart. I let him in and I got born again and I ain't never been the same since. There was no question in my mind <laughs> when the creator, the God of the eternal universe and everything, when he moves into your heart, <laughs> hallelujah, there ain't no, there ain't no mistake in that. Amen. He moved in. He became one with me. Uh, my spirit was saved in that moment. I was seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My spirit, hallelujah was brought to life. I, my, I experienced the spiritual resurrection that is the new birth. Amen. So that's my personal testimony. Now, here's what I want us to think about. To think about in this question, how have we led people to Christ for so long? How have we witnessed well, many of us have used what's called the Romans road. Amen. The Romans road that has been taught for so many years across so many platforms, uh, uh, non-denominational, the Baptist. I mean, many people have used the Romans road and what's the Romans road? Well, the Romans road to salvation is, excuse me. All right. Get my Bible. <laughs> All right. Romans road to salvation is Romans 3.10. And this is, this is what you get. You go to Bible college. You go to seminary. You go to, this they teach you. You go, you go into personal evangelism. You go into soul winning classes. There's so many books have been written and written and written. And they say, use this, use this, use this. So we go into Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 and say, here's what you sit down. You tell somebody in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Amen. For, for all, okay, because there's a, a, in verse 11, there's none that understand. There's none that seeketh after God. Amen. And then you go over to 3 and 23 said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you can stop and explain a little bit about that. Uh, there, That's how you're taught to do it. And then they tell you to go over to Romans 6, 23, and they explain in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So there's a, there's a price. We're all sinners. There's none righteous. There's a price on that sin. Amen. And they say that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then sometimes we ba bounce back to, to, Five, Rome, Romans 5 8, and we talk about, but God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So you understand that, that you know, that, that, that we, we were on our way to hell, that there was, that, that the wages of sin was death, but hey, Jesus stepped in. Jesus died for us. And then, then what? We take them, we take them to the close, right? And Rome, Rome, Romans 10 9 through 13. And we tell him, hey, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Then you get down to verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many 
lots. Maybe millions. How many tens and tens and tens or hundreds of thousands of people have been presented with the gospel in just that manner and received the Lord Jesus Christ? I've heard more testimonies in my 40 plus years of being saved. I have heard more testimonies that I could I could ever count, more testimonies that I could ever even imagine of people who were led to Christ and received Christ in just this manner. The churches in America are full of them. Let me ask you a question. Anywhere in that presentation was there a mention of the deity of Christ? Anywhere in that presentation did we explain that Jesus Christ is in fact God in the flesh? No. No, <laughs> that was not in that presentation. So if you're saying that you have to believe that Jesus, that in the deity of Christ before you can be saved, you're saying that all those people that were led to Christ by the Romans road did not get saved. See where I'm going with this? Hey, how about passing out gospel tracts? Amen. I could not even begin to tell you uh, the testimonies, the numbers of testimonies that I have heard about somebody getting saved by reading a gospel tract. Amen. You've heard them too. But guess what? I went and grabbed a few from our tract room. Number one, my favorite is the chick tract. Amen. I love chick tracts. There's no, no truer thing in the world that chick tracks get red. Uh, hey, you put one of these in somebody's hand and walk and turn turn your turn turn around a minute later. Folks are reading them. <laughs> hey, it's a little comic book. This is the this is the 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 the, most, the greatest track of all time in my opinion. Amen. And uh so you go in the back of a chick track, you know, it says uh, uh nobody else can save you today. Trust Jesus today that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It said, admit you are a sinner. See Romans 3.10. Be willing to turn from sin. See Acts 17.30. And remember it says, notice, be willing. That means, that means the Holy Spirit's dealing with you about your sin. It doesn't say quit sinning before you get saved. A lot of people falsely accuse chick tracks of that. Amen. So that's repentance, turning from sin to Christ. Amen. Changing your mind about your sin. <laughs> Believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, Romans 10, 9 through 10, and invite, it says, through prayer, invite Jesus in your heart, become your personal Savior. Hey, and prayer can be private prayer in the heart. It could be said out loud. It's it, that's between you and God. Hey, man, if you had to say it out loud. Mute people couldn't get saved. Hey, Amen. God knows your heart. God knows the, knows, knows the crying of your heart. And, and he, 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 he don't need to hear it if you're saying it in your heart. Hey, Amen. Uh, God, God is, uh, 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 not limited, uh, by a set of ears. Hey, Amen. There you go. <laughs> uh, but anyways, <laughs> nothing in there said anything in a chick track about the deity Christ. And I have met so many people that got saved reading a chick track. And so you got fellowship track leave. You got you got so many uh, uh, fantastic tracks that over over so many decades have been passed out and have won so many countless souls to Christ. But I, these are just a few that I grabbed and I went through every single one and not a single one talks about the deity of Christ. So you're telling, are you going, if you're going to say that you have to believe in the deity of Christ to be saved, you're telling me that all these tracks we've been passing out, all the souls that were won through all of these tracks, nobody got saved because they didn't know about the deity of Christ. Listen, that is not a prerequisite for salvation. It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's not memorizing the right formula it's the it, we got we can't forget the operation of the holy spirit in this 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 is this is not a mental exercise this is a spiritual operation a spiritual 
reception, a spiritual event where God in the person of his Holy Spirit comes inside of you, moves into your body. His spirit, he that is joined to the Lord, becomes one spirit. You are born again. You are spiritually resurrected. You are seated in heavenly places in, in Christ Jesus. And this is based on receiving a person, not learning a bunch of facts. Let me think about this. Holy Spirit knocking on a man's heart door, and that man is at that place, and that man's heart is crying out, Lord, 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 save me. And the Lord comes in, and the Lord says, uh, uh, well, before we do this, uh, do you understand exactly who I am in reference to the triune Godhead? Do, can you elaborate for me the deity of Christ? And that, and that lost sinner says, what? <laughs> Jesus said, that's okay. That's okay. I can't help you right now. Now, you go get somebody to uh, fill you in on all these theological details, and I'll come back, and we can talk then. You see the foolishness of that? All my years in prison, so many men, so many men that I, I've seen get saved in prison, and they didn't know anything. But God, the Holy Spirit, was dealing with them, and they opened their heart, and they received the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, then you talk to them, they don't know anything. And you explain, hey, guess what? Man, that's Jesus. Oh, yeah, Jesus, Jesus. Well, did you know Jesus was God? He is. Yeah, here, let me show you. <laughs> and amen. They go, oh, amen. Cool. Right on. They didn't have to know that before he got saved. You see what I'm saying? Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff. And let me let me take you to uh, 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 some, some, some uh, 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 scripture on that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here's what he said. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. All right? So here's the thing. You don't need to understand the doctrine of the deity of Christ in order to receive him. But if you do receive him and he's inside of you, <laughs> amen, when you do hear about the, about the, uh, the deity of Christ, in most cases, <laughs> almost always, <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit in you will bear witness to that truth and you will believe that. You see, that's why so many people can say, can they accept another Jesus in a cult and they didn't get born again? They have some, mental cult Jesus in their head and they become a Jehovah Witness or a Mormon or something like that. And there and there is no Holy Spirit witness, but pretty much any denomination that, that preaches and teaches the gospel and Jesus has been born again, those people get in there and they all, oh, okay. And everybody immediately just accepts that the deity of Christ, that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. He is the second person of the triune Godhead. Amen. Why? <laughs> I'll show you why. Romans 8, 16. Romans 8, 16. For the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and He is going to bear witness to truth. And the words of Scripture and truth, when they come, they are born witness to. They are received. They are illuminated. They are accepted by the by the working of the Holy Spirit in you. So, you know, you don't have to believe and understand the deity of Christ to get saved. But chances are, if you do get saved, you will believe in the deity of Christ. You will believe in the triune Godhead. You will you will believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. You will believe in the blood atonement. You will believe in eternal security. There are so many things you will believe on as soon as you hear them from God's word because his spirit is going to bear witness with your spirit and you're going to receive these things. But let's not complicate it. Let's not complicate it to the point of enticing words of man's wisdom and make a theological quiz and a test 
that somebody has to pass before they can simply open the door of their heart and let Jesus in. Salvation is not learning formulas. Salvation is receiving a person. And look, we cannot say about anybody but ourselves who is saved 100% and who's not. No. See, that's kind of Calvinistic theology about, you know, if, if you're saved, you'll bear the fruit and everybody will be able to tell. Listen, even trees have seasons. There are fruit bearing seasons. And then sometimes there are barren seasons. Sometimes a tree can look like it's dead, but it's not. It's not. You put a little more water on it. There's a parable in there about that. Put a little more water on it. <laughs> put a little more fertilizer. Wait a minute. And lo and behold, <laughs> give it some time. And hallelujah, there's the fruit. Amen. So you don't know. See, I know in my backslidden condition, in my past, there were times, there were years there where anybody looking at my life would have said, there is no way under God's heaven that that guy saved. <laughs> but you know what? I knew I was saved and backslidden. And God knew I was saved. <laughs> but you'd have had a tough time convincing anybody else of it. You know, the same can the same can happen doctrinally. A person can get born again, and then somebody come along, but we're not as sharp as we think. Somebody come along with enticing words of man's wisdom and get them screwed up here in the head, get them mixed up, get them confusion. Satan's author of the confu author of confusion. We're not immune to confusion. So even a born again person can get confused, can go through a dry season doctrinally and be confused about some things and still be saved. That's just that's just what it is. Look, look, sin is sin. The flesh is the flesh. And however that's manifesting, that can manifest in some mental confusion and doctrinal error, or it can manifest in sex and drugs and rock and roll. I mean, hey, or lying, hate and kill and steal. I mean, eat, whatever, however that flesh manifests, it can manifest. But but the manifestation of the flesh does not determine the salvation of the soul. Salvation of the soul all goes back to, did you get born again? It's so simple. Was there a time in your life where the Holy Spirit was dealing with you and you trusted, accepted, believed, called on him and he came inside of you and you were born again? And I'm telling you, if it happens <laughs> in your life, you'll know it. <laughs> Amen. You know, because everything changes. You can't sin like you used to sin. There's another voice there. There's that still small voice. You just you it, there. There's somebody else there. There's there's that new voice in your life. There, there's that new unction. There's those, look at when, when the creator of the universe moves in and becomes one with your spirit in your heart. You're never the same. But see, that's that's not based on learning some stuff up here. That's based on receiving a person right here. So I hope that kind of simplifies some things. I hope that uh, I hope that kind of explains the matter. Uh, it's different for everybody. Some people have been in church and they knew all about the deity of Christ before they got saved. There's other people like me that ne didn't, never heard of anything about that. But when the Holy Spirit came and knocking, <laughs> we let him in. Amen. So, hey, God bless you. Uh, I, I, ho I hope that was a help. Uh, that was all it was meant to be. Uh, uh, was, was just to be the blessing and we're point, pointing to nobody but the person of the Lord Jesus Christ who is, hallelujah, God in the flesh. Amen. We'll see you in the next one.